Today we're going to be talking about rational exponents. And we've actually looked at the idea of rational exponents in 6.5. So here's an example of one that we looked at even in 6.4. And we said if we have the fifth root of 243, a to the fifth and b to the 15th, we can actually think of it as fractions, which are rational. So if we think of 243 to the 1 fifth power times a to the 5 over 5 power times b to the 15 over 5 power, which ends up being, well, 243 to the 1 fifth power, if you don't remember, you can always use your calculator. 243 to the 1 fifth power is 3. So this is going to be 3 times 5 over 5 is just going to be 1. 15 over 5 is going to be 3. And so evaluating this, we get 3a b to the third. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at more examples of rational exponents. Here's an example. The definition of rational exponents is pretty much anything that's written in b to the 1 over n power, which is really the nth root of b. So this right here is what we're going to be looking at. Now, it says when b is less than 0, meaning it's negative, and n is even, something happens. We have complex roots. And we actually looked at a problem in one of our assignments earlier as well. The square root of negative 16 would be 4i. Remember, i is an imaginary number. It's in the complex number set and not in the reals. Now, we looked at a problem on our assignment earlier that was the square root of negative 4. We know the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of negative 1 is i. So the square root of negative 4 is 2i. Now, let's look at an example. Now, thinking back that we want to think of our definition, b to the 1 over n is really the nth root of b, we can go both ways. So 6x to the 1 over 6 power is really the 6th root of x, whereas the 4th root of z, I can write it as z is my base to the 1 4th power. So again, I can write it either way. Both of them are fine. I want you specifically to look at C and D in your guided practice to try some problems that don't look like what we just did. Now, example two, evaluate expression. Evaluate means to come up with a number answer. Now, one of the things that we talked about was when we had negative exponents. And we talked about that when we did rules of exponents. Remember, anything to a negative exponent, we would rewrite as one over what we had, but with a positive. So if we think of 81 to the negative 1 fourth power, it's really one over 81 to the 1 fourth power, with the 1 fourth being positive on the bottom. Now you might not know what that is, and that's okay. We can use our calculator, and we can say, well, what is 81 to the 1 fourth power? That's going to be 3. And so I could say that this is really just 1 over 3. Okay? That's pretty easy. You could actually also have just used decimals right away and said that, well, what is 81 to the power of negative 1 fourth? Check it out. 1 third. That's what we're looking for. Let's look at 216 to the 2 thirds power. Now we're asked to evaluate. So we could go to our calculator right away and do 216 to the power of 2 thirds. It's 36. Okay? So we know this to be 36. Now, why is it 36? Well, you could think of it a couple different ways. One way to think of it would be the third root of 216 squared. Now, you might not know what 216 squared is, and that's okay. Most people don't. But if I was to do that, I could check my decimals and say, well, what is 216 squared? It's going to be 46,656. So we'd say that this is 46,656. And so when I solve that, again, I don't know what the third root of that is. So I'd have to, again, use my calculator. The third root of 46,656 is 36. So we know for sure it is correct. A and B are a couple guided practice problems you can try now. Now, we are going to look at okay, what rational exponents are. And if we think of that, what we just did, 
as a number like this, b to the xy power, it'd be the yth root of b to the x, which is what I showed you. But another way to do it is this, the yth root of b to the x power. Again, remember, if b is negative and y is even, we're probably going to have complex answers. And here's an example of that. When I'm looking at negative 16 to the 3 halves power, it's really also has an imaginary root. Okay, so let's look at a problem that has to deal with money. Now, it says, suppose a video game system costs $390 now. How much will it cost uh, if the price increases in six months with an annual inflation rate of 5.3%? So the way we do this is we take our amount times the rate times the time. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say 390. Our rate as a decimal is 0 0.053. Remember, percentages always have to be written as decimals. And then our time, it says six months, but this is annual, meaning it's one year. So I'm going to write it as six months out of 12. Now, it might look kind of goofy to you. You might be thinking, well, that's just one half. And you're right. So we can actually just put this right into our calculator just like this. We'd say 390 times 0 0.053 times 6 over 12, or 1 half, is this 1034 rounding to the nearest cent? Now, you might be thinking, okay, it can't be 390 and then go to 1034 in six months. Okay, it's not going to lose $380 worth. But it's actually also a price increase. So that means how much it's going to be in the end is actually going to be 390 plus this 1034 which would be a total of 434. So what's the price of this video game system going to be in six months time? It's going to be $400.34. Now, using the same setup method, I want you to try the, this guided practice problem now that has to do with a gallon of milk. Thinking back to our rules of rational numbers, if we had x to the a times x to the b, what did we do with the exponents? We actually just added them, a plus b. And the same is true when we're looking at exponents that are fractions. So a to the 2 over 7 plus 4 over 7 is going to be a to the 6 over 7. Now, we're lucky that they have common denominators. If they don't, you'll have to make one. Now, we don't like to write them as fractions. We don't like our powers to be fractions. So we actually are going to write this as the seventh root of a to the sixth power. And that would be the most simplified. Now, technically, this is correct. But this one right here is probably how you're going to see it on a test or on a quiz or something else. Now, letter B has a negative. And we said, remember, anytime we have negative exponents, they have to go down to the bottom. So we really have 1 over B to the 5 sixth, which, like we just did before, would be the sixth root of B to the fifth. Now, we can't have radical signs on the bottom. And this was a problem that a lot of people wanted more help on. So what we're going to do is we have to get rid of this sixth root. Now, notice I have five b's right now. I need to have more than five if I actually have to have six if I want to get rid of the radical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it by the sixth root of b to the one because five plus one is six. And I'm going to multiply the top by the sixth root of b to the one as well. And so when I do that, I end up getting this. I get the sixth root of b, just b, as the sixth root of b to the sixth, which we know to just be b. So this right here is technically the most simplified version of our answer. Okay? So I'd like you to try these guided practice problems now. Example five, we're asked to simplify the radical expressions. Now, if I look at letter A, you might be looking at that and saying, I'm not quite sure where to start. And that's okay. One way you could think of it is, okay, get rid of the uh, radical signs. And so we'd write this as 27 to the 1 fourth power over 3 to the 1 half power. And again, you may look at this and say, okay, that doesn't look much different. What I want to remind you of is this. Remember that 
27 is really 3 to the third power. And the reason I point that out is because now if I have a 3 here and a 3 here, now they're in the same base. So I'm actually going to rewrite this right here as 3 to the third. And so this would be 3 to the third to the 1 fourth over 3 to the 1 half which when you simplify and remember power to a power, what we do is we get three to the three fourths over three to the one half. Now, again, when you're dividing, you subtract the exponents. And so I'd get three to the three fourths minus one half. And again, you probably would look at that and say, uh, we've done enough of those problems to know that that would be three to the one fourth power. And so again, we don't like to have radical signs in our answer, so this would be the fourth root of 3. So we went from something like this to something like this. Looks a little bit nicer. Now letter B is a problem like what we did to start. We're looking for the third root of 64z to the sixth. So I'm just going to rewrite this as 64 to the one-third power times z to the 6 over 3 power. Reducing that down, if I want to know what 64 to the 1 third is, it's actually a whole number. It's 4. So we would just write this as 4 times, and then 6 divided by 3 would be z to the second. So my answer actually is just 4z to the second in this one, which is kind of nice. Now, letter C looks a little bit more difficult. And the reason it looks difficult is because we have those one-half powers in it. But what I'm going to say is let's rewrite these just as the square root of x. And so we have three square roots of x on the bottom here. Again, more people had questions on how to do this from section 6.5. And so this is a good example of another practice at it. Anytime we have radicals on the bottom, to get rid of the radicals, what we're going to do is we're going to take multiply by the uh, conjugate. And so I'm going to write this as 3 square roots of x minus 2 and 3 square roots of x minus 2. Now, I wish there was a nice, easy way to tell you how to do this with a little bit less work. But really, truthfully, we just have to FOIL these out. And I know that takes time. But 3x times 3x is 9x. And then 3x square root of x times negative 2 is negative 6 square roots of x. Then we get 2 times that would be plus 6 square roots of x. And then finally, 2 times negative 2 would be negative 4 on the bottom. Now let's do the top. Okay, so we'd have square root of x times 3 square roots of x would just be 3x on top. Square root of x times negative 2 is negative 2 square roots of x. Then we get negative 2 times that would be negative 6 square roots of x. And then finally, negative 2 times negative 2 would be a positive 4. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to simplify. And we're going to say, okay, so 3x, no other x's. It's going to be on the top. Negative 2 square roots of x minus 6 square roots of x is negative 8 square roots of x. And then finally, plus 4 just tags along. And then on the bottom, we have 9x. That cancels out, that cancels out, minus 4. And so just we've gotten rid of all the square roots on the bottom. Now we only have just an x and a 4 on the bottom. Looks a little bit nicer, uh, and we no longer have radicals on the bottom, which is good. Here's a couple guided practice problems for you to try. Specifically, let's try 5C. So here are our rules that we're looking at. We want to have no negative exponents. So that would be if we have x to the negative one-third, right? We would actually just rewrite it as 1 over x to the one-third or 1 over the third root of x, right? Oh, can't have those. So now we have to multiply by the third root of x squared on top and bottom. And so we would get the third root of x squared on top and then it would just be x on bottom, okay? Now, next one. No exponents that are not positive integers in the denominator, meaning we don't want to have negatives in the bottom either. 
Next one, no complex fractions. That would be like what we just did in example C, getting rid of the square roots on the bottom, or like right here, okay, getting rid of the third root on the bottom. And then finally, the index of any remaining radical is the least number possible, meaning if we have, um, you know, like the third root of 27, we don't leave it like that. We actually change it to 3, right? And so those are our rules of rational expressions. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, good luck on your assignment. And uh, like I said, let me know if you have any questions.